Hello, all the wiser listeners. You are our family. Hello, family. And hello, Tara and Erica. Hello. Hello. Are you ready? Sort of. Sort of. <laughs> this is our last episode of All the Wiser, our finale. It has been a five year journey with you that has been transformative on every level for me personally, for the three of us, and hopefully for you listening that you've been changed in some way. And today we want, just from a place of gratitude and love, to thank you, our audience, our listeners, our community, our guests who have showed up for us in just incredible ways, and also share with you how we have been changed in the process. So if you've been listening to the show recently, you know we asked people to either write an email or DM or call into a voicemail about how they have been changed by this show and the stories we share. And in real time, meaning a lot of this we'll be listening to and hearing for the first time. So Tara, let's get it started with just a few of the messages and stories from listeners. So I was pouring through our Instagram message and had to scroll quite a ways looking. I had found some that really meant a lot to us and showed how impactful listening to our guest stories really can be and how personal they can be. So I'm going to read a couple messages that we've received and one being one that felt really special to me. Okay. The first one I'm going to read is from Suzanne. And it says, absolutely love your podcasts. I've been listening on and off for about a year. The podcasts have been particularly helpful to me after losing my identical twin sister a few months ago at the age of 62. The pain she endured and her will to survive reminds me of your guests. Thank you for such beautiful and inspiring work. So that was oh, man. You one of them. <laughs> where Kimmy's like faces crunched up. I th- it's just such a testament that people come here to feel less alone when they're suffering or grieving. And the fact that this show provides comfort to someone who's experiencing that type of grief was, yeah, is everything, right? Thank you, Suzanne. Yeah. Thank you, Suzanne. This one, this is from Aaron. And it says, hi, Kimmy. I'm not even sure if you'll get this or read my message here, but I just wanted to take a few minutes to reach out to you. I don't even know where to begin. I guess I'll start by saying thank you and congratulations. I just finished listening to your episode with Scott Harrison. What an inspiration. What an amazing accomplishment. Thank you for all the wiser. I haven't missed a single episode. Tara's crying. I don't know if I can do this. (laughs) I'm just saying there's no video. (laughs) I can honestly say that I look forward all week and wake up every Wednesday looking forward to and excited to hear that week's episode. (laughs) Why did you guys pick me to do this? (laughs) Your podcast has been a real source of inspiration for me over the last 19 months. You see, 19 months ago, I hit bottom. I guess bottom is different for everyone. For me, bottom entailed a lot of depression, heavy drinking, pornography, and chat rooms. My marriage was in shambles. I was not the husband or father that I needed to be, could be, or wanted to be. I was a mess. My life was a mess. Almost 19 months ago, on October 7th, 2019, I made a decision and a commitment to myself to change everything in my life. My new motto was 100% positivity. From that point forward, I decided to only surround myself with positivity and positive thoughts and ideas. It's a lot easier said than done. I gave up drinking. That was not easy and decided to work on my marriage, relationships, and my life. I began to become a better husband, father, friend, and person overall. I also got back in shape, started running again, and shed 50 pounds. It wasn't always easy, and it's been a really long journey. 
one of the biggest positive and inspiring things that has helped me the most has been your podcast. Each week I tune in and listen to the inspirational stories and amazing people that you interview. And it always gives me such hope and such a great feeling inside. Your podcast is one of the things that helps to keep me right on track. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This note will never be able to tell you the full story of what all the wiser has meant to me. And I only gave you a glimpse into my story and my journey. There's more good to come for me. I've got many ideas and plans for my future and upcoming years, including a job change to a field where I can help others get sober. Thank you again. God bless and keep being a bright light in a sometimes dark world. Okay, I'm a little speechless. (laughs) Erin, well, first of all, thank you for taking the time to share that feedback with us. It's not easy to just put thoughts pen to paper and send them out into the ether and wonder if anyone's going to read them on the other side. But I just want to give you all the credit because you did this work. You did the work. You changed your life and you found the support, the resources. You found the strength within yourself and to have the self-awareness to know the areas of your life where you want to improve. And I just love that you made this positivity commitment that you were like, okay, 100% positivity. That is so inspiring. And I think I might steal that from you and try it (laughs) in my own life, even for just 30 days. So thank you for being a friend and companion alongside us. And we're so proud of you and cheering you on. All right, Tara, next. <laughs> okay, I'm going to read a couple more just to kind of even out the It feels field. like we're at a funeral and like everyone's reading their memories of the of the person that <laughs> died. <know. laughs> All right. Okay, this next one is from Melanie. And it says, thank you for your stunningly beautiful podcast. I listened twice to Diane Button and as a result have enrolled in end of life doula training. Thank you for all you do and share. Oh, so cool. I so know, right? Diane Button, you guys, or for listeners, was the death doula. And people were so moved by that. The, but the fact that somebody took action to become a doula yeah. From listening. So cool. Yeah. Makes me so I happy. know. The next message that I'm going to read is really special to me because it followed the Kate Ranta episode. And for our listeners that are not familiar with that episode, um, it was one with Kate Ranta and she wrote the book Killing Kate, which is a which is a story of turning abuse and tragedy into transformation and triumph. And Kimmy and I had recorded the A Little Wiser episode following about domestic violence. And I had some back and forth with Kristen. And this is her message. I am an avid listener of your podcast and your episode this week helped helped give me strength to leave for good. My life is currently on fire, but I am safe and my kids are safe and that's all that matters. Thank you for that. It is so difficult, but I just know it will all be worth it in the end. I have the absolute best support system and I know so many women who don't. This will be my story to help others once I come out on the other side. Um, So Kristen and I had some back and forth and shared some of our experience. That was back in January of 2023. And just last month, at the beginning of March, she followed up um, with a message that said, a little over a year ago, a little over a year ago, I messaged you guys and said your episode about domestic violence helped give me the strength to leave. I wanted to share that it was really for good that time. And it has now been 402 days of peace and happiness for me and my three children. We are happy, healthy, and thriving in our new life. 
thank you for all of the episodes that have spoken to my soul over the years. I'm so happy to have had the pleasure to listen and feel not so alone. And then she sent a video and some photos of her kids playing um, and just said, this is such a bittersweet season, but I am enjoying it. Thank you again for creating this podcast. And I know you guys have touched countless lives. I mean, that one like rocked my world. Uh, (laughs) The video of her kids at the park. Yeah. So the follow-up was so strong and the fact that she had committed to that a year ago and, and stuck with it, I know how hard that is and how many hurdles she had to jump over. Um, so that it's a difficult road. So thank you, Kristen, for sharing that with us. And thank you, Kate, for coming on the show and letting us be the conduit to her um, and for her kids. Yeah, that was was a big one. I'm so, so happy for them that they have that freedom and that joy. The fact that this, um, these stories, you know what I mean? That like it works, right? That sharing these stories can do all the things that it can actually um, give you the courage you need, right? To make big, scary changes. Mm -hmm. Um, And then it like works that Kate feels safe and has the courage. Sorry, Erica hates my throat (laughs) clears. Um, Kristen, you mean? Has the the courage to. Kate Kate or the listener? Oh, Kate. No, Kate. No, I'm saying that that Kate Kate has the courage. Kate Ranta has the courage to come on this show and that the three of us can be the conduit to Kristen. Totally. Yeah. All right, and now we are going to play some listener voicemails. Hello, All the Wiser team. I felt um, inspired to just thank you, to extend gratitude for these years of stories, and they really have they really have transformed me. And through different moves that I've made, where I'm alone and I'm taking walks and really learning from lived experiences. Of so many perspectives that I hadn't heard before, but um, many that have really resonated with me have been about um, those that have had to be in and out, um, some for a very long time in the criminal justice system, and the ideas presented about restorative justice and about really um, how <laughs> the entire criminal justice system really just needs to be completely changed, but hearing their experiences and, and hearing ways that policies could could be better, could improve, and how we can support in the community um, people, uh, these individuals that have had such difficult childhoods and their um, families of origin, so many difficulties and trials and, um, you know, structural racism, that really, so many of those stories have just stuck with me resonated and stuck with me for years. So thank you. It has been um, such a gift to be able to experience these stories. And I know stories do transform us and can be subversive and can really, um, can really change, can change people, can change communities, can change society. So thank you to you all and wishing you all the best in your next adventures. And if for any reason you want to get a hold of me, um, Again, I don't know if I said my name is Summer Manning, and I'm calling from Estero, Florida, and my number is 602-717-1885. Thank you. Take care. I love Summer. Aww, Summer. Cute. So Summer. Nice. Thank you. I love her voice. I love that she listened on walks and that um, our stories made her think, because sometimes it's inspiration to to change personally and sometimes it's um to think about the world differently right Mm -hmm. and i know for me the perspective education and compassion that i have for for just that the incarcerated population uh as a result of this show is has allowed me to understand the on such a deeper level right the need for societal change and shifts in perspective and policies and so that's the other piece of this show right is the 
the education and the awareness in these stories that's baked into them. Yeah, it was never our intention to hit people over the head with social justice messaging um, or even take really hard positions on things, but rather let people share Just their let lived people experience share. Yeah. and let the listeners take away from it what they what they will. Yeah, and yeah. Summer's... A, it, Thank you, Summer, because that just makes me <laughs> very happy. And Erica, amen. I think we we stayed the course on that. It was always about letting the stories shine, mm-hmm. right? So thank you, Summer. All right, you want to play another one? All right, this one is from Maggie B. Hey, Kimmy and team. My name is Maggie Baum, B-A-U-M. I'm calling from Madison, Wisconsin. Um, thank you so much for what has been one of my all-time favorite podcasts. I um, Actually, my history goes back to April 23rd, 2016, when I saw Pearl Jam at Jazz Fest in New Orleans, and Steve Gleason introduced Pearl Jam. And I did not know who he was at that time, um, but my husband just immediately cheered up. He said, wow, that's Steve Gleason. He's a totally famous, awesome football player, and he has ALS. And he was just um, so moved by seeing Steve there. And after that, we started following Team Gleason and Steve and Michelle's journey. So it was through their social media that um, I learned of their interviews with you and Uh, found all the wiser in season one when you interviewed Steve and then Michelle on the next episode. So um, I love how that's just an example of the positive ripple effects that people like Steve and Michelle and you bring to the world, um, how we find each other, how we make connections. Um, I just love that. So thank you so much for all of your great interviews over the last five seasons. I I just um, really love how you treat everyone with kindness and compassion and that your story is really focused on hope and resilience and, again, that there are just these wonderful ripples that come from people in the world who share wonderful stories and share their incredible personalities and just put themselves out there for the rest of us to, to find and connect with and learn from. So, Thank you so much, Kimmy, and to all of your team members and all of the hard work you've done over the years. I have really loved your podcast and absolutely loved how the stories provide hope and inspiration and joy. All right. Thank you. Bye. I love Maggie's voice. I love Maggie. Thank you, Maggie. In the million ways in which people found this show, including Maggie, you, Maggie. like at a Pearl Jam concert, was the beginning of her connecting the thread to all the wiser but she said the word hope which comes up again and again from our guests and for somebody who has spent the last five years sitting with people in their suffering who've been through unbelievably painful difficult horrible things I feel more hopeful truly more hopeful about the world about and yeah. Hope and possibility is, is, you know, the tagline, the through line of the show that Erica came up with. So, Maggie, I have found so much hope in this show, and I am so glad you have, too. All right. Okay. Um, I have a voicemail here that I am going to play. And here we go. Kimmy, this is your husband, Graham. Stop. Congratulations on the epic progress and conclusion to all the wiser i remember you talking about all the wiser years ago and over five years ago courageously pulling together our close family and friends in the backyard to announce the project it's super impressive what you've accomplished but as i think back about it and reflect on it i'm not really surprised because you've always had amazing projects but there are some things that stand out to me uh, that include One, just your ability to find a studio in closets, in powder rooms, anywhere in the world, wherever we were traveling to, and the progression that you've made in having great high-quality studio equipment 
and the quality of the production over time has grown so much and it's super impressive the other is the celebrity moments that we have with you where we're just talking at a restaurant or an airport and someone hears your voice and is blown away that it's actually you from all the wiser it's super interesting to see how many people you've touched that we have no direct relationship to it's just been a string of followers who have found your podcast through press or through referrals and referrals to, to people we would never impact or, or or talk to otherwise and we hear from those people we hear countless times from from people both who we know and people who we don't know about how the stories that you've shared on all the wiser have impacted their lives and that's true both for listeners and also for the people who've had the chance to tell their story on on your podcast so what an amazing example i we see it in our children who you know see the example of your hard work on a day-to-day basis and they know you're doing it for a good cause and the fact that you can balance that work well you know me i'm personally checked out and traveling sometimes and you hold down the fort and do the balancing work of making sure the podcast is so high quality so congratulations kimmy i'm excited to have a little more time with you now that you won't be in so many recording sessions but again i know something new is coming and excited to see that and experience it with you oh my god first of all his voice sounds super hot i don't know why That was so weird. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god! I don't know why it sounded like this. Oh my gosh! I don't. I mean, first of all, I mean, he's obviously said many times that he's proud of me, but I had no, never in that, um, in that way. Um, and it was so funny because I thought, like, my mom, my dad, the kids, like, and I, Graham is so different than me, and that I'm like vulnerable and a storyteller and I was always like I wish people could hear from him right because I've talked about him and referred to him so much and he's so great and funny and so like I love that on this last episode you guys got to hear his voice because he's been such a partner and support in this Erica did you talk him into doing that (laughs) (laughs) I might have yes but I will say that he responded immediately and he was like, I'm in. Yes, let's do this. Well, first I reached out to him on Instagram and I didn't hear back from him. Oh, because he doesn't check. He gave it up for Lent. That's what he told me. (laughs) He gave it up for Lent. And then uh, I had like an email address for him from his work and I didn't know if if it was even still good, but I sent an email and he immediately responded. So I'm so glad thank you that for doing that. Able to purchase. Thank you. Of course. Thanks, Graham. What oh, a guy. Thanks, Graham. I know the best. Oh, all right, that one got me. Um, <laughs> so there we have it. Our listeners, including uh, Graham, who has listened from the beginning, and our guest. Now that we have heard from our listeners, we asked some of our guests. We've had a hundred guests, as you know, share their stories. And some of the most powerful moments were people who shared their story for the very first time, who had never really spoken it out into the world and tell all the wiser. And those people, I think we've developed a really special relationship with. Totally. And a few of those people, our, our near and dears, sent in their own voice memos. So the first one, we're going to play a clip and then hear from Martin Lockett. Martin spent 16 years in prison for vehicular manslaughter where two people lost their lives. And we met Martin, I think, six months. He had only been out. He had been incarcerated for 16 years and six months after he was out and uh, making already an incredible difference in the world, a person of service and impact. And yeah, he shared his story for the first time with us. And I think it changed us and it changed him. So we'll play you a quick clip. And then I want to share you a little voicemail for Martin. Here's how vain and superficial I was. When I got out of my vehicle, I didn't go check on the car that I had just hit or the people and how they were doing, I immediately began to assess the damage on my car. So at that point, I am promptly placed under arrest, 
put into the back of the cruiser and we head for downtown for processing. And I drive past my parents' block and I knew that I would not see that house again for about 20 years. Pennsylvania, and I was actually a guest on the show. And let me just say that this, when, when I gotten the offer to tell my story on All the Wiser, I was um, I was over the moon, and then I was really really nervous in preparation for it because um, I, I I had learned about uh, Kimmy's background, and you know she had worked for you know somebody by the name of Oprah Winfrey. And, you know, this was like a legit podcast, right? And so I was nervous. And, and um, prior to telling my story on this podcast, I had only done one of the podcasts, which was a, on a much smaller scale. And so I, I, I prepared as best I could. And I remember going into the podcast, Kimmy was just um, just so inviting. And just the way that she, you know, asked her questions. And, and frankly, I was really impressed with how much research she had done on my story prior to me coming on. So I knew this was, you know, this was this was the real deal. Um, but I just felt at ease. You know, I felt like it was a conversation. And I really, really appreciated that. And I'll tell you, after I shared my story and hearing some of the feedback, it really um, bolstered my confidence to continue to go on and, and share my story. Um, I went on to speak on about 20 other podcasts or so. And it um, certainly gave me even greater confidence to get in front of live audiences. And so, you know, I've now spoken at major conferences and, and panels and, and high schools and colleges across the country, um, all, I would say, are largely as a result of uh, sharing my story on All the Wiser. Um, so professionally, it's really done wonders. Personally, it really connected me to just humanity. You know, hearing about all the stories and everything, um, the adversities that people had overcome was really, really inspiring. It just let me know that, you know, humans are quite remarkable. You know, we see a lot of bad stuff in the world, but um, just getting down to the sheer essence of, of humans and, and the human spirit and the resilience that we possess. Um, many, many of us don't even know we possess it until we are faced with extreme adversity, and that show really reminded me of that. And it just inspired hope. So thank you so much, All the Wiser, for everything that you have done for me personally and professionally and certainly for humanity um, um, across this country. So thank you so much. Oh, my God. Oh we my are God. all Martin groupies. <laughs> such a groupie. Thank you, Martin. <laughs> And he is making such a difference in this world with his work. He's back in prisons working and doing drunk driving impact panels and speaking and writing. And oh, he's just such a positive, shining example of the ability for people to, you know, transform their lives and make meaning out of you know, the darkness. So we love you, Martin. We love Martin you, forever. Martin. <laughs> Martin forever. I love it. Okay, Tara, Tom and Ken were also Tom. I, I got to do Tom and Ken in person here in LA. I love them. Yeah. I know you have developed a relationship with them. So why don't you remind our listeners or who may have not listened a little bit about Tom and Ken's story and then I will play their voicemail for the first time so we can listen to it. I think it's from Tom. Uh, Tom and Ken. Hi, guys. We know you're listening. We love you so much. <laughs> we have become, <laughs> in, well, Tom and I have become Instagram besties. So I like to think so anyways. Uh, so Tom and Ken's story, uh, they are were a two-part episode and Kimmy interviewed each of them individually about adopting their son, Matthew, who suffered with severe mental illness and one night almost killed them. And they shared their story for the first time. So here's a clip. It was definitely a rough patch for us. But through the therapy, she suggested that I have to take my feelings towards Matthew and set them aside so you can cope because you want to be there. You love your husband. You want to be in this relationship and you have a son. So I had to learn how to basically ignore it. 
I had to ignore all the chaos that, for me, he was bringing. I think Tom dealt with it much better than I did, or possibly hit it better than I did. Hi, it's Tom Belay and Ken Call in Los Angeles from episodes 72 and 73 of All the Wiser. I want to say that the opportunity to record the podcast was life-changing for me. Um, we had been stabbed four years before the recording, and we're well on our way to a great recovery. And at the same time, everybody we shared the story with kept telling, telling us, you've got to get this out there more broadly. You've got to get this out there more broadly. And I hadn't quite figured out how or when or where to do that when I was then introduced to Kimmy and the team. And um, I did it because I wanted to help other people with a message. And what I found most revealing afterward was that it actually helped me a lot in my own journey of recovery to be able to share the story and tell it and then record it and have it published. So I want to say thank you to Kenny and the entire team and wish everybody the best. Ken? Recording the episode was very cathartic for me. It really helped sharing my story and I was pleasantly pleased that I was asked to go further back in my story to <clears throat> another point in my life and share that. And it, it was helpful for me. It was helpful for others that told me after they listened that um, it just gave them more strength in their own journey. So thank you, Kimmy. And thank you, all the people involved with All the Wiser. I greatly appreciate it. And it's Tom again. I just want to add one last thing that one of my favorite reactions that I got from a dear friend who was very close and lives on our block was that she didn't know she could go from being curious to frightened to enlightened all in one hour. And I just really love that quote. So thank you for that opportunity. Thank you. Bye. Oh, curious oh, to frighten awesome. to enlightened. That's good. Oh, that says it all. Yeah. 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 Oh, man, that, that episode, those two episodes, I remember I was just poured every little ounce of my creative and energy and juices to just, I was so focused on just getting it right. And I really wanted to encapsulate their love story and their humanity in the episode. And I, yeah, I stayed up so late and just, I'm so glad that they felt like it, it really landed with them because it was so powerful and the way they told it was so powerful and the way you brought it out of them, Kimmy was so sensitive and thoughtful. And I love that Ken said that because he had all of these past lives and past stories and there was so much there and I'm so glad we did it in two pieces and made room and space for all of it and they just continue to reach out over and over again about what they hear from people who have listened um oh I'm so glad they called in yeah thank you Tom and Ken all right our third and last guest we're going to hear from is Haley Holm and I want to let Erica tee this one up because I know they've they formed a bit of a friendship, as have I. Adore her. She's great. So Erica, yes. for our listeners, remind them of her story, and then we're going to play a clip and her voicemail, which we'll hear for the first time. So Haley Holm is a veteran of the United States Air Force and served um, many tours in Afghanistan. And she bravely told her story about transitioning to living her life as a woman. She was born and raised and was living as a male all the way through her time in the military. And the impact that it had on her and those around her when she finally started living her truth and living as Haley. And it was so touching to follow her journey along the way and see those little 
signposts and those signals and those brave moments of taking a chance and, and putting yourself out there and living your authentic truth. I know I remember she was very nervous to tell her story. Kimmy, you can attest to this because didn't she come to yeah, your house? Yeah, she came to the house. To yeah. record? Yeah. And it was just such an honor to be a part of that journey for her. So let's play a clip and then we'll hear from Haley. This yearning to be female would not go away and I would suppress it and it would come back and I would suppress it. And so I didn't know what to do with it. And I was starting to get concerned about it. And that's about the time that Caitlyn Jenner showed up on the scene. And she was featured on the... Cover of Vanity Fair. Yes, exactly. Call me Caitlyn, it said. And I remember looking at that photo and being like, wow, if, if she can pull that off, then I can do that too. Haley Holm. I'm calling in from Osaka, Japan, and I just wanted to start by saying how much I appreciate being a part of this. Uh, I'm truly honored, and I receive feedback from people all over the world on Instagram, and it, it was positive and, and enlightening. And people told me that uh, they had never considered what it might be like to be in my shoes and how much they appreciated uh, knowing more about it or understanding better what what it's like. And um, that was so uplifting and sweet. And I guess previous to this, it was not always so positive to share my story. And I was kind of afraid to share it. It's like I would share something about my past and then brace for the impact. Uh, and, and now I'm not afraid anymore. And so okay. I think that is, it, it's, it's my participation in this has freed me from my story in a way. And um, I'm just really grateful for that. And I really appreciate what you guys have done. And uh, again, I'm just so honored to have been a part of this. Thank you. Freed me. <laughs> Storytelling is so powerful. Sharing one's truth and one's journey and is so healing. I'm just so, so grateful to know that it was healing for her because no one should have to brace for impact when they're talking about themselves and they're sharing their honest truth. And she has had to suffer a lot. And I'm so glad that she's seeing the fruits of what it means to inspire and enlighten and educate people from a positive way. It's just really, really cool. It really can set you free, yes. especially when it's so deep in shame and you're internalizing all the shame and judgment that you see or experiencing. And I think just standing in it and sharing it and then it's so amazing in, in this show, right, is the feedback and the love that pours back sort of that they see all of you and, and celebrate. So free is it's a very accurate description. I feel that way, even about sharing myself on this podcast, that it absolutely sets you free. Yeah, you felt that way after your episode. Yeah. Tara's crying. Tara, would you like to talk <laughs> through your tears? Um, they're honestly happy tears for Haley and for, I think, just our guests because... It's so powerful to be able to show up as you are. And I know how hard it can be to be vulnerable and feel exposed as just myself with a pretty quote unquote normal life experience. But to be able to 
really just be able to be yourself has to be so, like she said, freeing. And I just really want that for everyone so bad. Yeah. So thanks, Haley. We love you so much. (laughs) Now that we have heard from our listeners and our guest, we want to end this episode, this podcast with you by thanking you for giving us the opportunity and the space to be with you, to share these stories, and to tell you how we have been personally changed by this show. We just heard how our listeners and guests have been changed. When we started this, or at least for me, this was a professional storytelling pursuit. I did not go into this for my own, you know, personal development or healing. And this show and this community and working with Erica and and Tara and meeting all of you, meeting you listening and has literally transformed me as a person. I have been changed deeply in the process. And Erica and Tara feel the same way. We are different people before this show than we are now. And we wanted to end with sharing that and thanking you for giving us the space to do this work, which has really changed our lives. And we'll let Tara, our incredible associate producer, start. So Tara, what has all the wiser meant to you? Yeah, how have you been changed and what have been... I guess the greatest gifts or, or, or lessons. Yeah, it truly has been like the joy of my life in a very unexpected way. For some context, I came onto the show at the end of season one and I was going through a very big life change and moving across the country and just kind of like flipping my world upside down. <laughs> No um, experience in podcasting. None. none. No, no experience Nelch. in podcasting. So I was kind of also in like a weird space, I think, mentally. And just like Kimmy entered my life and we worked, we decided we were going to move forward with working together. I was going to work on the pod. At the beginning, I was like, oh, this would be so cool. I'll get to meet some cool people, listen to some stories and you know, it it would just be like a cool thing to do. I did not know that it was going to have the impact that it has had on my life. And I would say overall, my biggest takeaway from the pod itself and the trajectory of my life is to trust the timing of your life. And I think it's really solidified that for me. So I would say that's the largest thing that's made the impact on my life. Would the change I saw in you, and then I want to hear, when Mm -hmm. I met Tara, it was, she was working for a company that partnered virtual assistants with female entrepreneurs, and Tara was a virtual assistant. We really need somebody to kind of stay organized, and I interviewed a bunch of people, and Tara pops up, and I'm just like, I knew it. Like, I'm like, there's something about her that feels entirely right. And I don't know what it is. And the role was a very admin type. And as the months, uh, her creativity, her vision, her intellect, her and I would see it grow and grow, like her confidence. And she just became such a integral part of this show and this team and this engine. And Every little interaction in the show matters to us, like how a guest feels when you email them and make sure they're prepared and feel safe and comfortable and informed for the, when the charity and the amount of emails I've received that say, she is such a pleasure, she is so professional, that she forms relationships, that she stays in touch. And it's just amazing that you've come so far and you now you were working for somebody and now you've created your own business partnering with storytellers and designers and so the change that i have seen in you and i don't 
I know a lot of it is this show, but is a different per- a different person. Thanks, Kimmy. Thank you for saying that. I think I'm blushing if you can't see it. <laughs> but I will say that one of, and I've said this before on, on the pod, that the connections have been my favorite, probably my favorite part and my greatest joy is connecting with other people and hearing their stories and really just talking to them human to human. And somebody asked me recently, and I'm pretty sure he was talking about a skill or a talent, um, but he said, what is one thing that you would say you're better at or more skilled in or talented in, whatever word you want to insert there, than most of the population or like 90% of people. And it took me a while to think about that. And I originally, I couldn't come up with anything, but the more, I can do it. But the more I thought about it, and sit with it I do think that connecting with other people is something that I've really worked at and have become good at even great at Um, and I'm really proud to say that because I think overall what this show (sighs) I think overall what this show has taught me and the wisdom that I've taken away from it is understanding what I really want my legacy to be and talking about (laughs) death and eulogies. um, Maybe this is like a dark thought, but I think about it a lot. (laughs) What I would want people to say, you know, when I'm gone and my greatest hope is that people would say that I always, my greatest hope is that people would always say that I made them feel seen, heard, loved, and valued. So I think that has been, that has been the show's greatest gift for me. I've, I've seen you with some of the stories and, you know, particularly domestic violence has this show been healing for you? Totally. In so many ways, I think my healing begins with shared experience. And I've learned that in a lot of different areas in my life is feeling way less alone in it. And that's been proven true time and time again, story after story, connection after connection. And I do think any of the wisdom I have in my life comes from that and, and knowing and trying to understand others. It, it helps me hold a mirror up to myself. Is there any piece of wisdom or guess that changed you? Like that you're different after it? Um, I think I've said this before. Um, but, I think Skylar Baylor was the first episode, full episode that I worked on, like from start to finish. It was during a time where the transgendered community was way more visible, which I loved, uh, becoming way more visible to us as people. So being able to connect with him, work on his story, have exchanges, now I follow him like on social media and, and see what he's doing. It just opened up my world to so much more. It's funny because I was listening to, I think it was the Grammys and I think it was Emma Stone who gave a speech and at the end she thanked her daughter and said, you've turned my world to technicolor and not to be corny, but I think this has given me 
coming from a small town in upstate New York, it's made my world explode in the best way. Yes, you are. You're effing amazing. (laughs) Couldn't have done it without you. No, not a question. All right, Erica. You ready for the hot seat? You ready to move on the therapist couch? Erica? Oh, Erica. (laughs) Five years publishing the show. Six. When I first met Erica on a blind date. And told her about this crazy idea that I had. And how far we have come from no podcast, not one listener, two strangers, cup of coffee. <laughs> it's, it's unbelievable how the world works in that way that our lives intersected. We really created this show together in partnership every step of the way. And... I, we've we've talked about it in bits and pieces, but I really want to hear where you are now and for our listeners to hear what this show has meant to you and how this community has Yeah, has I'm remembering that coffee date. Um, I was so nervous. I was so terrified because... I had just started this podcast producing business. I don't even know, consulting, coaching, working in podcasting. And I was in a horrible job and career that I hated. And it was making me so, I just was like a shell of myself. And Kimmy was client number two for me and my first client was like this super arrogant man who didn't pay me and and I was like oh I can't I can't do this I can't do this consulting thing I'm not I don't have it in me and then I met Kimmy and immediately I knew that this was going to change my life. I just had a feeling when I sat down with her and I, I guess like I felt something in her that she was hiding. I just could sense that she was hiding something that about this project. It was, she wants to share all these stories and, and I, and I kept wondering, well, why? Why? What is it? What's There's something in there that wants to come out, and I'm not sure what it is, but I'm just going to say it. <laughs> so I asked you, and you shared something very personal with me. And, I mean, this was our first date, so it was, you know, you shared with me that you had been keeping this secret um, that – you have bipolar disorder and I knew that you know I I love a purpose and I love a challenge and I knew that part of my journey was to help you share your story and tell your story but what I didn't know was that working on this show and and shaping these stories so intimately was going to help me shape my story and I didn't tell Kimmy that I too struggled with depression and anxiety and I had for a very very long time and that I was in a lot of pain myself and that over the years what this show has done for me is um, it's allowed me to have compassion for myself in a way that I've never been able to before. I think we're all our own worst critics, but 
my, uh, I was so mean to myself. I was so critical and I was so judgmental. I think of others too, because it was, it was a defense mechanism and I was protecting myself. And I'm just so grateful that I've been able to soften and be much more compassionate and gentle with others and myself. And at that beginning, that first meeting, I was so terrified that I wasn't going to be able to do this job, that I was going to disappoint you and that I, that I couldn't tell these stories that I didn't know how to share them in a way that would do them justice. And what I've found is I've been able to build my own self-esteem as a writer and as a storyteller. And it's just the greatest gift anyone's ever given me because that's all I ever wanted was to tell stories and share stories and help people feel less alone and I feel more connected to the world and not be so isolated. And so I'm just thankful and grateful to you for trusting me to be your partner in this journey. And um, I'm going to miss hearing your voice every week. It's kind of like the background to my life. So um, <sighs> thank you. Erica is the most (laughs) gifted writer, storyteller. I mean, she has taught me a million and one things about how to do all of this. I'd been a journalist for years, but not in front of the microphone and not in audio. And the partnership is just, you're brilliant. You're brilliant. Beyond, and we laugh. Beyond. We all laugh. <laughs> I know you guys hear us cry, but we all laugh a lot. <laughs> oh, together for these for all these years. <sighs> no, or right, Erica, is there anything? I think I'm good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh gosh, I I think that the best way to put it is I feel closer to God as a result of all the wiser. And what I mean by that is for me, God is everywhere. And that means in all people, every single person in the world and including myself and to sit with a hundred people who, first of all, just trust you like with the, all of them. And it wasn't always easy for me to be in that proximity to pain, nor my own pain. And and this podcast changed that. And not only did it change it, but what I realized in sitting with them, right, and listening that I saw all of them, all of them, and not just the parts that were hard, but just all of their humanity and their goodness and their hope and their heartbreak. And you can't do that and not feel walk away feeling more connected. So when I say I feel closer to God, to a hundred people and people from so different than me that I would have never met, right? And I, from a very young age, I was so sensitive, sensitive just to the world, like so empathetic. I would see things And other people could see them and know that they were sad, but it would just like wreck me inside. There was something about suffering that I wanted to understand. And I was also just a deeply curious person. Like I I wanted to understand them and why and how. And, you know, I think most of it's at some point question like, well, why am I here? And what are my gifts or what are my contributions? And I think the show, and it wasn't even this way, was like allowed me to do that, allowed me to use, you know, I believe 
hopefully my curiosity about people and how much I love people, I just got to use my gift. And and also just to have faith that I have no idea how this will go. Like people will, will put it into the world and will people be changed? And I think so early in the show, I was like, self-conscious and looking pouring over every script and like Erica take out the um I sound whatever critical listening to it and as time went on I just like held everything so lightly and I stopped caring what people thought I think I was much more insecure on the front end um and I mean like all of us I'm like full of contradictions right like I'm a very deep, soulful, real, truthful conversations, I will always, always go towards. That is who I am. But at the same time, like, I have an inappropriate sense of humor. Like, I like to laugh. I occasionally dance on tables. And so much of my life, I compartmentalize. Okay, this is ambitious intellectual Kimmy. This is Kimmy who, and then this group of people, and this show, I just got to be all of me. I didn't have to hide any part, including the the shameful mental health. I just got to be all of me. And that is a gift. And um, it was it's only possible because if I was sitting by myself in a garage and five people were listening, I probably, you know, wouldn't have had that. It's not It is by virtue of every single person who has. So to be able, where I am in my life, to get the freedom and the confidence, and I feel incredibly more hopeful about the world. I feel more connected to the world. I don't feel so isolated in the sense that all of these people, right, who we've met, who've been incarcerated up against cancer and addiction and I see what they've been through and I see their strength and I see their lives and their beauty and their relationships and it makes me more helpful. I've totally let go of identifying with my mental health story that felt so big to me five years ago and now I'm, I think of it completely differently. And I've changed. I'm a more my nervous, I have a totally different nervous system. I'm way more calm and present like my old anxious, manic, achieve, perform has softened deeply, which allows me to be more present for my kids and my life. And it's been a gift beyond words. I just am a more peaceful, happy, grateful, hopeful, present It's person. been really nice to really see nice. how you've changed over the years, Kimmy. I think sometimes we can't always see ourselves in the same way as the people around us who see us and work with us day in, day out. And you have changed. You've just become everything that you just said, but you've relaxed into your own skin and you're more present and just softer and more... um, open to like spirit and and connection and I used to sometimes worry that I was taking up too much of your time or you were like rushing but (laughs) because I was always rushing yeah yeah you yes you've slowed down it's nice yes and it feels I mean that we had this big launch party which is kind of funny it was really fun um we had like a stage and we had our one of our first guests who was erica's friend do live storytelling and we introduced this podcast is coming we had like 150 people again this is like almost six years ago everyone leaves and i'm like of course at the party like all dressed and have a blow dry and i'm speaking and i'm all confident and everything looks good and everyone leaves and i'm pounding wine in the kitchen, like mauling the box of cookies and waking up the next morning. Like I said this, oh, da, da, da. I, I, the pictures I hate just so everything has to be perfect. Like all of the anxiety of what people. And when I tell you now, getting ready to do a big interview, getting ready to do 
it is just so different. It just comes from a place that feels like, oh, this is what I'm meant to do. And it's going to be, it's just like a trust in myself and a deeper belief in in what is true and what is right happen. Like I just, yeah, it's such a better way to live. And this show and the people and the bits and bits of wisdom of that really all we can control is our thoughts and how we react, that people matter most. As Edith Eager said, how do you spell love? T-I-M-E. All of these things slowly were absorbed. And as a result, I'm, I'm a different person in all of the best of ways. What is your greatest hope? for the legacy of All the Wiser? Hmm. I hope it lives on. And by that, I don't mean, you know, I do mean the podcast being out in the world for people to listen and to return to. But when I say lives on, I mean in the people who've experienced the stories and that they have that, that knowledge or that feeling or that wisdom to return to again and again. Maybe they won't think about it for a long time, but when they need it, they'll remember that moment when they heard a guest say something they needed to hear. I hope it'll continue to be healing and cathartic for the guests who shared their stories, that they will run into people who see them and know them more deeply as a result. And I do hope the content continues to ripple its way into the world. We won't be producing new content or promoting it, but I have a lot of trust in the universe and that these stories will continue to intersect in people's lives at the right moment. So I want to end by thanking you, our listeners, Like I just said, you gave me the freedom to be all of me and show up over and over again. And I kind of feel like (laughs) you like all of me. (laughs) And that feels really nice. It feels really nice. And um, Tara and Erica, the friendship and the connection that we have grown. But thank you for all of your... your heart and your energy and your time and your brilliance and your create creativity and your patience with me and um just believing in and believing in me but also believing and loving this as as much as I do you are um a blessing in my life and another added benefit is I I met lifelong friends so can't leave that out so thank you both In addition to Erica and Tara, I want to thank our insanely talented and detail-oriented John LaSala. John is our editor, sound designer, and music composer. He pours so much into every sound you hear. Thank you, John. You have been such a huge asset to this podcast and to the listening experience. I also want to take a quick moment to thank Graham and my three kids for their patience and belief in me. All three of my kids helped me find stories and produce interviews. And this podcast took a lot of time. And I... I'm really proud of them for supporting me and loving me through it. So I know you guys will listen to this. And Sutton, Katie, and Esty, mommy loves you very much. All right. This is the (laughs) end of the funeral. (laughs) No. Well, the show is ending. 
we would love to stay in touch with you. And by that, I mean, who knows, right? Things happen, new projects, or just something happens in the world or with one of our guests, and we or we find a new story that we have to share with you. So the best place to do that is our newsletter. And from time to time, when the little whisper occurs, we want to have a place to write to you. And yeah, just, just, it's like we're leaving camp and we're exchanging numbers, basically. So Tara, for everyone listening who would love to stay in touch with our team, and certainly if we have any new projects, you'll be the first to hear about them. Where can they go to sign up for the newsletter? If you go to our website, which is allthewiserpodcast.com, you can sign up for our newsletter there. Or if you're more of a social media person, you can go to our Instagram and there's a little link in our bio that'll lead you to that as well. And Erica, for anybody who has been inspired to perhaps start their own (laughs) podcast, does know what she's doing next. I do not. You can... (laughs) Email at hello at all the wiser podcasts if you have any ideas of what I should do next. But I do not. Uh, terrifying and freeing all at once. But Erica, I just want you to share because who knows who's listening to this and dreaming. Yeah, of well, uh, I have some time now. So if anyone is interested in starting a podcast of your own, I would love to be your partner on the journey. Uh, You can reach out to me at Erica, E-R-I-C-A, at podkitproductions.com. You can go to my website, podkitproductions.com, and book a free call with me, and we can talk about it. Or if you have a podcast and you need some support or feedback, I also am available to do that as well. All right, so sign up for the newsletter if you want to hear from us to time and time. If you want to get in touch with me, I will now be at Kimmy at KimmyCulp.com. And you guys are everything. You made this show possible. You inspired us to keep creating it and sharing it. And I cannot thank you enough. It has been a true privilege to be in this with you for these past five years. And I do hope that these stories continue to go out into the world. If there is somebody at any point you have thought would benefit from listening to this show, I hope you'll send it to them so they can be a part of all this too. All the wiser family You rock. We love you. Take care of yourselves and one another. (laughs) Why are you so shocked? It's not that shocking. What happened? Sorry. She's just in trouble. Oh. For what? For barking? Oh. <laughs> it's Jeez. mommy dearest. Yeah. So what's happening? <laughs>